I'm with Michael Freeman, the president and CEO of Florfolio. We're in Edison, New Jersey. And Michael, it's great to be here with you. Great to be here, too. Thank you. Great for you to be here as well. Thank you, Dave. Um, to start off, tell us a little bit about the Florfolio organization and a little bit about the history. Florfolio is a company that is unlike any company in the industry left today. Uh, you know, as all companies start, they start, you know, you know, with a vision and, a, and, a, and um, you know, a, th a thought and an idea and uh, a way to go forward. And, uh, you know, as companies grow, you know, and, uh, you know, and everybody has their success stories. You know, Florfolio has grown, but, it, it, you know, the one thing and its one vision that it's never lost sight of is where it came from. You know, Florfolio is a grassroots organization that uh, has rooted itself in not only the people that, that work for it, but the partners uh, that we've created throughout the industry today. Uh, you know, we're proud to have you know, some of the best people uh, in the industry working for us. Uh, I'm proud to say that none of the internal people uh, actually came from our industry. Uh, they came from outside the industry and really got their roots in the industry. So they learned it from the ground, ground up. Uh, obviously, the management that, uh, you know, for the outside part of the organization, all seasoned flooring people, but all the internal people that, uh, that work for us, we're truly blessed. I mean, these are some of the most amazing people that are, that are out in the industry today. And, you know, I can name success story of a success story um, and talk about these people. But, you know, the, the reality is, when people deal with us, when we have customers that uh, have been with us either short term or long term, uh, and uh, the comment we always get back is we have the best customer service team, the best, you know, the best team in place to service our products and our, and our customers going forward. Um, you know, and we get compliments all the time. Uh, and I think the real secret to Flowfolio is we've never lost sight of where we came from. And I think it's probably an asset to bring people from the outside rather yes. than have them accustomed to the way it's always been done. Absolutely, and I'm, and it's, I'm not saying it to knock the people that are in, in our industry. I've always felt that you know, if you're going to bring people that are going to really um, you know, you know, have our values going forward, you know, they have to learn from the ground up. And there's no preconceived notions. They do not come in here. Uh, thinking that this is how a company should be and act that way, yeah. uh, you know the you know I, I've instilled in all our people that um, you know the matter the matter who they talk to every customer you know the matter they give us an order for a dollar or a million dollars you know those customers are equally as important and we treat them all the same I got you. and um, because of that the customers that started with us for a dollar are now million dollar customers so it's an interesting success story I see now I know we're going to talk about new products mm -hmm. here but before we get to that let me just ask you about the company's product line from the beginning up to this point LVT and uh, EnviroQuiet some mm -hmm. of the sheet products Sure. And your philosophy as it relates to, to product. Yeah, the, the one important thing, Dave, is that, um, you know, we have first and foremost always been a resilient player. You know, we're not a manufacturer that started with something else and that became what we are today because the, the, the category became successful. So we are one of the first um, pioneers in that category. There was really only a handful of us, you know, really in the industry when it started, and it's not that old of an industry uh, or a segment part, you know, so to speak. The um, so we started we started with LVT. That's that's how we started sheet goods and LVT. Uh, and you know, like any company, we started with a small collection, um, but we immediately you know created uh, what became very unique for Flafolio. Uh When we entered the industry, there was um, there was price categories for the different levels of products that you sold. So, you know, you, know, you have price lists out there, and I'm, you know, I'm dating myself, but, you know, about 10, 10 years ago, you, people would sell LVT in different categories. And uh, there was wood, and there was stone, and, um, and those would be sold at different price points. And you would have to pay more for the bells and whistles on the product, maybe a texture or a urethane or whatever else you wanted to put on the product. 
we never played those games. You know, we actually started with, you know, products cost us exactly the same. Honestly, they cost every manufacturer the same. Uh, and we did not upcharge them for our customers for it. We never penalized our customers because we offered something different or unique. So we, you know, we, we immediately came out with one pricing structure for, for the complete collection of the line. And then the line started to grow because what, what happened was, even though it was a basic collection, you know, you know, our customers, you know, were very unique. We immediately entered uh, the multifamily sector uh, be, when the multifamily sector was not doing that well. Um, you know, it wasn't booming. It was uh, the company, you know, if you, if you go back 11 years, you can imagine we were at the height of the recession slash depression. Um, so a lot, not many things were being built, um, but we, we entered that category and we entered it not by offering the cheapest product, but we offered it by, we entered it by offering the best product. So whereas when the industry started, it was always a cheap LA or six mil, which is what a lot of people still offer today. Uh, there was never such thing as a urethane where like, you know, a urethane top coat, uh, that was an option. And, you know, there was, there was only one or two choices. Uh, you know, if a, if, her, if a company had a collection, it was seven to ten colors at most, typically about five or six. Uh, and we immediately launched our product line. At that time, uh, it was about 50 SKUs, if, if I had a guess. Uh, but we offered them in any which way the customer would like. And, you know, and the customer came to us and said, can you do this visual? And we would say yes. And can you do this texture? We would always say yes. Can you change your size? We would, we would always say yes. Um, and we would never upcharge our customers for any of that. Um, so we started a category and, uh, and a concept you know, that some people are still to this day struggling you know, to, to copy. Uh, and again, that all goes back to you know, we never ever lost sight of where we came from. Mm -hmm. You know, we, this is how we started, and this is how the company continued to evolve over the years. Now, the LVT marketplace mm -hmm. seems like everybody and their brother is in LVT. Yes. And there's from soup to nuts. Talk about operating in that environment. Well, there's there's several ways to operate in that environment. You know, you could have a uh, um, a scorched earth policy where you could just go in and buy the business and sell it at the cheapest price. Um, not a big fan of that, not a big believer in it. You know, it ends up destroying the category, you know, for everyone. Uh, then there's the, you know, the, 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 the thought process of you create a brand, you know, you create specifications, uh, you, cr you create unique design visuals, you create a service team to service that, you know, second to none. Um, and you give them the options that are typically not offered when you drive it down to the, to the lowest common denominator. So we, we're on the, the, the second approach. You know, and then there's the other way of, um, of creating a category that didn't exist, which is when we created EnviroQuiet to offer a solution to what was becoming a very, very big problem for the industry today. Um, so that's what we did. I mean, I could go back, Dave, to the, the industry when, you know, when we all started. And, uh, and we can talk about um, the laminate manufacturers that entered the marketplace when you know, it was Pergo, Wilson Art, and maybe a hundred other manufacturers. And you would go to surfaces and you would see two-story booths and you know, they were, you know, literally everybody was clamoring to get into the, the laminate market. And now you look at it today and there's really just a handful of people left in that category, you know. And because what happened was people drove it down to the common denominator. You know, it's my goal, and I'm sure it's a lot of other manufacturers that are, have um, have decided to, you know, make this their their home, you know, or their living, you know, to to make sure that doesn't happen. Now the company has a number of of, of patents. Yes. I think there's just a couple of recent patents that mm -hmm. you're just announcing now. Talk about the patents and your whole philosophy as it relates to patents. EnviroQuiet was created uh, to solve a problem. And the, the problem was very clear. There were, there, were, there were two issues that were happening in our industry today. Uh, the first was installation and the second was sound, uh, or sound first and installation second. The, you know, the problem was that, uh, you know, there was a, 
a code or called IIC, uh, which was a sound code that was required to meet, uh, to meet the sound levels in, in buildings today. And you know, if you just installed regular LVT you know, in, in an apartment building, it wouldn't meet that code. So there was a lot of uh, you know, lack of knowledge, so to speak, in the industry uh, where people weren't quite sure you know, what, you know, what products to use and how to use them. And there really became a cottage industry of sound underlayments that were created you know, to help reduce the sound in, in the building. Um, but what that also created it was a lot of uncertainty because there were so many different versions of, of these uh, underlayments and so many people claiming so many different things. And, you know, and I talk about it versus the, you, know, the, you have the experts, the people that really have made their living in the industry and understand you know, what, these, you know, what these sound tests mean uh, and how the products you know, are, you know, affect you know, the sound in a building versus a salesperson that just literally you know, wants to sell a product at the cheap, cheapest price and really doesn't have the knowledge that they should have to, you know, to, to go into an end user and say, this is, what the product, this is the product you need, this is why you need it. So the industry was having you know, all these sound pads coming out and obviously you know, the LVT coming out as well. And so it became two installations where you would actually put the sound pad down, glue it down to the floor, and then put the LVT over it, and then and glue it to that. You know, and because of you know it being a relatively fresh sector, you know, all kinds of problems ensued. You know, because you know as things get bid, it goes to the lowest bidders, and some of these you know the installers that didn't know what they were doing, you know, you know, or the the, the manufacturers that were selling on delayment that really weren't um, really up to the standard, you know, for these buildings. You know, were causing some failures, uh, and the first was really installation failures, and the second, which is now the biggest, is sound failures, where you know they claim one thing, and then when the structure was built and, and tested, it it didn't meet the codes that they needed to meet, and that's created uh, an opening, and our product was created called EnviroQuiet, and EnviroQuiet really is the first product uh, that actually enables you to do just one installation versus two. Uh, you literally go in, the product has a permanently attached sound pad to the LVT, and you just glue it right to the floor versus you gluing an underlayment, then you, you're, you're gluing the LVT to the top of it. So we went in and provided a solution you know, for the end user and the installer, and the finger pointing that ensues you know, when, when the product fails, because who do you blame, the, the underlayment manufacturer or the LVT manufacturer, the installer or, or both. And, and the end user unfortunately got stuck in the middle of that. So we solved that problem by introducing EnviroQuiet and we were blessed to be awarded two patents for it currently, uh, which were awarded about a year or so ago. Uh, and we now have uh, three patents pending. Plus we were just recently awarded a Canadian patent for, for EnviroQuiet as well. We also have a, uh, a patent pending for you know, the uh, European Union, uh, and we continue to file new patents uh, for, you know, for the uniqueness of EnviroQuiet as we continue to change the product to meet the, meet, the, um, meet the industry concerns today. But I think what is also important, Dave, is that uh, you know, when we went down the road of forming a solution, uh, com coming up with a solution for the end user, we also didn't look at a product and say it's one size fits all. So we created several versions of EnviroQuiet. And you know, we have um, Dale Tucker, who's our vice president, who sits on the acoustical committee of ASTM. <coughs> Excuse me. And he um, you know, understands the inner workings of, of how the product should function and how it works within the sound of a building. And we're the first people to say to, to, to a customer, you know, or to an end user, you know, and this is a question that never gets asked, I promise you that, um, you, know, what's your, you know, what's your floor to ceiling structure? You know, you know, how is the building being built? You know, what's your, what, how, how are you planning on building your building? And, you know, and we ask those questions before we even recommend a product. And then we offer a product, you know, that fits within that environment. And given the testing to back it up, 
you know, you know, the interesting thing about all these manufacturers that have come out with products, you know, you could pick up the phone and call and say, I need, you know, a test result for this product. You state on this piece of literature that it meets an IIC of X. Can you explain to me how you've achieved that? Can you show me a test result? You could wait a week before somebody even gets back to you, if you even get an answer, or if they could even provide you with the data. You know, we're up front and have nothing to hide and give them what they need.